So as we're waiting in line, it actually gives us a really good opportunity to look at St. Marcos Campanile, or the watchtower of the city. So you can see this huge structure, it's about 50 meters high. And uh, it, this, so this building has a unique history. It, it, it actually, st they started building this in the 10th century, but it reached this magnificent height only by the 15th century. So it took a while to build it up. And the reason for building this was first, first to look out for the ships approaching the harbor. So any warring ships, it kind of served as a defense tower, but it also served as a sort of, a, not a lighthouse, but a, a landmark that a sailors that are coming from Adriatic could look at and know where Venice is. Now, actually the building you're looking at is uh, rather new. So in 1902, the whole thing collapsed. There was, uh, the foundation wasn't as sturdy as they thought. They started reconstructing it and unfortunately in the process, it collapsed. So you can, you can sort of imagine the, the rubble that was on the streets when it did. But then in 1915, so, you know, in, uh, in less than 15 years, they have reconstructed this magnificent building almost to its origins. And uh, here it stands today for your enjoyment. So we'll, uh, we'll make our way in there and, uh, and hopefully I'll show you the view from the very top, which is quite unique because this is the very highest building in all of Venice. Okay guys, so we're standing here in lineup. Uh, about to go to the tower. I'm not sure if um, it's stairs or ele elevator. We'll find out, but uh, should be a magnificent view from up top. Okay. Oh, <laughs> look at this. Wow. So we just walked out of the elevator and look at the view of the city. Oh my God. Look at that. This is magnificent. Look at that. Wow. So we're standing at the very top of the uh, of the Venetian tower, city tower here. Let's walk up close and check it out. Oh, there we go. Look at that. So this is the open, open waters there. And this is where the water taxis bring you from the airport right there. And then you, and then. Let's keep walking. Oh. Oh, look at that. Wow. Look at this, guys. So here we are, overlooking. This would be the uh, the basilica right there, as you can see. This is the Doge's house, and here is the Venice, Central Venice, right here. Okay, guys. So we're keep doing the roundabouts here at the the watchtower. Just wanted to give you a nice look at the all of Venice. This is the highest point in all of the city. So to see it as it is, you you have to come up here. It's an absolute must to get the full glimpse of the this ancient Renaissance wonderland. Look at that beautiful rooftops. Wow, there we are. As you can see, Venice is really just one big island. That's all it is. And there's no roads, so you can't drive your cars here. You, you won't find any cars, in fact. 
because the city is connected through canals. These canals are actually not that deep. They're about, you know, two to three meters, four meters high. And, and they are the, the driveways of Venice, you know? But except, so driving, you take a boat or gondola or motorboat to get from place to place. And as you can see, they kept it largely, largely historically intact. So on the horizon there, you see sort of, you know, new, new buildings and factories and whatnot. But here, it's just like it was five, 600 years ago. Nothing changed much and things are not gonna change in the near future because this, this is kept in its originality by the government of Venice. And look at the beautiful view we can see of St. Mark's Square right there. Wow, look at that, neat. But the purpose of this tower, of course, was, you know, based in practicality. So what you see above me are the, the, the bells of Venice. And um, so the reason why the tower was here, of course, like I said, so you can watch out for any incomers. So any, any enemies that might be approaching your city, you'll see them from far away. But you would also signal to the, um, to the upcoming uh, ships to where they should go to find the port of Venice. But also these bells right here, as you can see above me, there's what? There's a few. There's one here. There's an, another one right there. Another one right there. So there's quite a few of them. And they serve the purpose of notifying people when the working day would start. So we'd think of it as a, a modern day um, alarm. So, you know, they're loud. You can hear them from um, around the city. Like we're staying maybe three, four blocks away and you can hear them in the morning when they start going. So it would wake people up. It would also tell them when the working day was finished and also would notify holidays, any major events, and also when, when the doge would be giving his directions or executions being proclaimed from the doge palace, again, the bells would ring and you would know that something important is happening. So people would then rush to the St. Marcos uh, Square to find out what's happening. Yeah. So, you know, for 600 years, oh, well, maybe more actually for, I well, know, but when it was built to this grandeur, yeah, for 600 years, this is where the heart of Venice was beating. Well, and another interesting part about these bells, a little bit more sinister parts, is um, actually, you know, in ancient Venice, um, there was quite a lot of anti-Semitism. So um, there's actually a large Jewish ghetto on the outskirts of town and when these bells would ring um, the Jews of city of Venice would know that it is time to leave the city or in the morning to enter the city and I guess so they couldn't stay here um, beyond that so very very sad and unfortunate part of history but you know such is history